the second trip, even as young as age five, we can see the differences, the cultural differences of children who have been raised in communities who do a little analogous thinking or uh, who are more likely to do uh, relational thinking and children who are uh, educated or living in communities that are more sequentially oriented like American communities are. So we are already teaching kids different ways of thinking. There's no question that age five, children have already learned their own communities way. They still have the capacity to think in other ways, but what they can pull out first is what their families and the way their families and communities think. So um, if we want children to think in more different ways, we have to expose them to more different ways of thinking and say, it's okay to think that way. But we generally in school say, we want you to think in the sequential way. We don't want you to think in the analogous way. That's number one. Number two, our studies of expert thinking show us that at first, experts must master through repetitive experience with the same types of situations, the basics of how those factors work. So you can't be creative until you have the baseline information off of which to be creative. These studies have mostly been done with chess players. How do expert chess players play as opposed to novices? It is a very different procedure. Novices check each move and they have to see if it's moving in the right direction. They're uh, doing it in a very uh, mechanical way. Whereas uh, once you've mastered that stage of it, you can then think creatively about how to do things. So there is the need to have some practice doing something over and over again in order to be good enough at it to think creatively about it. Uh, two quick thoughts uh, building on what we've just heard. Uh, number one, I very often hear, as Mohan was suggesting, that uh, project-based learning becomes a kind of uh, solution or a first step toward uh, more holistic learning or at least boundary-breaking learning. And I hear it at almost every level of education I go to. Uh, at the conservatory level, where I spend a fair amount of time, uh, it is profoundly not project-based. And there's a strong demand from students for, pardon my French, what they call oh shit learning. That they would love to have projects throughout their years where they are forced to, oh shit, produce a concert. And that their learning suddenly quadruples in terms of pace, range, holism, because they're suddenly having to learn about marketing. They're suddenly having to think through how you get an audience. They're thinking through the consequences of choosing a program. And in fact, they suddenly discover all kinds of creative capacities they didn't know they had. Uh, but let me pick up on Barbara's point and, and throw it back to our panel. There's a, a kind of generic assumption that the arts have something directly to do with the development of creative capacity. Yet Barbara, you challenge us that just, you know, having your hands on some kind of arts medium for a while. Well, we don't have any evidence that there's a good transfer training between left and right or something like that. Well, let me ask you, the point I'm, I'm wanting to build, uh, pick up on is you say, for real uh, development of creative capacity, a certain level of basic competence in a domain or in a medium is required before you can really start muscling up those creative capacities. Yet in the general mind, there is this sort of soft assumption that just by being around artistic media, just by doing dancey things, or by being in a play, that somehow, even without having developed basic competencies in those art forms, there is something creative that is being excited. Where, where does that fall? Something that's creative and something important, and I would say there are important things besides making money and, and having applications that are, are realistic.
I've heard from both of you, and I'm about to turn it to you, uh, is that the discipline developed in those six years of piano lessons or the ongoing work in the art form are somehow directly connected to the creativity we're describing. And I'm asking about, what about those first six years of goofing around on the piano? Not the developing the real disciplined chops to get good enough so you can really start to create something in this complex medium, but the kid in a school who isn't going to have six years of intensive lessons, how does creativity fit in in the kind of broad spectrum of what happens in a school fight? And starting with persistence from creativity. Okay, and because I heard you emphasizing persistence, so we're saying there's a distinct component. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, the you know you raised an interesting question about well, what if we did everything through projects? What I've learned in life is that wherever you're looking at black and white, usually the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's gray is the color of wisdom. You know? As my hair done gray, I can say that. <laughs> um, and, 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 and the point is that, you know, and this is again a philosophical observation that all duality is ultimately false. There is unity in duality. So if you're looking at this dichotomy of project based versus In our business, if you take Harvard Business School as an example, they believe, in some sense, in that project approach to teaching, which is all we're going to teach you is 70 case studies, and then you figure out, connect the dots, and that's the theory. Um, the other extreme is, are, are, are schools that will rely primarily on the lecture board and saying it's the theory and concepts we teach you, and then you figure out how to apply them. And what I believe is that the truth is in the middle, that you teach a concept and a fairly structured approach, but then you apply the learning in action. So it's 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 like a zoom out, zoom in, you know, theory, practice, abstract, concrete. And I think it's through that that is how you really flex your muscles by going back and forth between wide angle and and and, 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 and telemoto and um, theory and practice. And and the same thing across disciplines. So projects are important, but you can't go to that extreme and that probably sort of ties in with Barbara's point about fluency and confidence, because that fluency and confidence may be built using a more structured approach, but then you need play to apply it, and that's where projects, and in our business it's case studies, simulation exercises, consulting projects, like for example in my class, I teach a concept, then I apply it to a case study, but I also give students a project where they go solve a 